Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I need to set up my multitude of devices so that are totally optimized like a Houston mission control so I can manage this whole thing. <clears throat> yeah, I've learned a thing or two myself along the way. One thing I've learned is to make sure my Teams is completely off on my laptop. <laughs> Otherwise, it's completely. I'm sorry, I missed that. Completely what? I have to make sure my Teams is I, I use Teams on my iPad off to the side because if Teams is on my laptop, uh, all the notifications come up in the corner of the screen. Oh, right. So I need to turn off my noise. Yeah. Um, rah, 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 rah. Okay, Max, thanks. Connor, do you want to do a sound check? Check, check. All right, I think you're good. We're still doing no video, correct? Correct. Yeehaw. Uh, do you have some applicants that are going to be on today? Yeah, I have an applicant who will be joining. Um, I don't know that he will be on early, but um, he doesn't have a presentation or anything. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't know, Andy. Do we typically do applicant presentations with regular ZA? Not, I haven't seen it much. Well, yeah. I mean, but they're not, we're not showing them. Um, they, they don't get video, but, but they do follow the uh, planner's presentation. Oh, okay. So the planner's presentation is kind of their presentation. Yeah. Basically, it's like I ask, I always ask my applicants, I share them my presentation and I'm saying, hey, do you have anything else that you would want to say? And they usually just say no. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, often we're coming to these meetings with a friendly recommendation. It can't be the case that we're coming forward, well, your item, for instance, uh, Connor, we will be bringing forward a condition of approval that wasn't previously, I assume, in your resolution regarding modifying the building design to comply with our height standard, whatever Correct. it is. Um, so it, it, it can be the case where the applicant really needs to have an opportunity to, uh, I'll say, vent or, or comment to make their position, which might be contrary to staff. Mm. Adam, I'm, I'm check. Check. Hola, como estas? Bien, bien. Cool. Does that work? Am I too quiet when I talk like this or do I need to speak louder? I've had some issues with just kind of mumbling, I guess, with the way that my microphone is set up. You sound pretty good. You sound good now, Adam. Okay, thanks. Going back to mute. I need to get my background on my, I, I have a new um, uh, tablet from the city that I'm, I realize I don't have my, my ZA backdrop stored there. So I got to figure out how to get that on my, How come I can't copy an image directly out of an Outlook email to some place where I can upload it? Oh. 
Do you have your email pulled up outside of the VPN? Yes. I, I, I should be able to save an image, an attachment. You should be able to just uh, go into VPN. Type no, in no, not, not VPN. I'm on my email my, um, to my work address, email address. And um, um, so I want to save it on my C drive on my local computer. That's what I want to do. I should, I should be able to do that. I don't understand where, why. Where is it right now? It's in the, it's in the memo field of the email. Oh. To myself. It doesn't allow me to drag and drop it out of the program, which is bizarre. One second. Huh. Uh, I'm wondering, Kimberly, do you have that dark background you sent to me? Oh, here. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got it here. I closed everything on my laptop except for um, except for the things I need for the meeting. And now tell my. Hey, if we have. Um time can I do a quick share screen practice sure go for it am I supposed to request to share a screen or do I just start doing it the only time you have to request it is if I've got my screen if I'm sharing my screen but I just ended it so you should be able to just go for it oh, okay so i don't have to like raise my hand or anything like that no no that was more for um you know what we had to do before if we had multiple attendees just so that you could easily be unmuted so i could find you easily in the participants uh... but I think these days, everybody, you know, all of you guys are just kind of logging on early, so we're not really doing that as much. Wait, I got two more here. Hey, Connor. So I've got this image on my Mac, and it's a PNG file from Photos. How do I get it to a JPEG so it's friendly with uh, with with um, uh, Windows? What's your um like image opener or editor in Mac? Is it preview? Uh, right now, um, I think it, I think it's photos. It's, um, excuse me, it's, um, sorry. Whatever it is, it sh you should have an option to open a JPEG in it and then export that file as a PNG or the other way no, around. No, 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 vi vice versa. I, yeah. want, I want a, a JPEG. Um, yeah, so you should be able to open a PNG and convert it. So, Andy? Yes. I don't mean to distract you. I'm actually, uh, I messaged Michelle to dig in my folder and see if she can email that to you, make it a little easier to access. Okay, I, I think I just got the export to JPEG. Oh, okay. Function going here. So, I'll um, let you know that. Um, that Susie requested that her item be moved forward on the meeting so that she can attend a Caritas meeting. Who? What? Susie would like to be moved to the number two spot on the meeting. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I'm okay if you move them before me. My items are not controversial. Thank you, Monet.
Are you all set, Connor? Are you finished? Well, let me just do this one last time, sorry. Okay, no worries. I want it to be full screen. Did that work? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Sometimes with Zoom, though, it's easier to put it up, um, not in presentation mode, and then get it into presentation mode. Okay, so Michelle found it and sent it to you, Andy, to your email. Just okay, to I just did that same to myself. Okay. That's cool. Someone, Kimberly, someone sent a message. Did you see it? Yeah, let's see here. Rachel? Okay. Rachel, you should be receiving a prompt. And if you answer that prompt, we can go ahead and get a sound check. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Hi, good morning. Mr. Wellman, you should be receiving a prompt. If you answer the prompt, we can do a sound check. Connor, are you all set? Yep, I'm good, thank you. No, I can't use a PNG. Gotta use JPEG. Okay. What? Okay, now I'm like frustrated. You can you okay? Looks like you got it there, Andy. Yeah, perfect. I want to reverse it though. Not fancy enough, huh? <laughs> no, I kind of, let's see. Okay, that's better. Um, all right, lighting. Uh, 
Okay. It looks like we have a new attendee that's a phone call. Um, does anyone know if that's an applicant? If, if, if caller, if you are part of an applicant team, can you raise your hand? You can press star nine to raise your hand. Or if you'd, uh, if you'd like to do a sound check, you can raise your hand also. Susie, would you like to do a sound check? Good morning, everybody. I have Good morning. a question. Do I need to turn my camera on? No. You can Good. leave it now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Andy, I'm texting you right now. My cell phone? I guess so, huh? If that's all right. Yeah. Okay. As long as you're being nice to me. Hey there. So Susie, open channel. Yes, we discussed uh, moving your item forward on the agenda and we'll do that. Thank you. <clears throat> and Susie, what's the... Um, what, what's your item number? It's three point, let's see, I should have. 3.5, it's a landmark alteration at 615 Jefferson. 615.
then we want to move it to item number two. Yeah, because I think item number one is, has been elevated or either continued from another meeting or elevated, I don't know if it's public hearing or not. Uh, let me see. That's correct. That would be my item and it has been requested for public hearing for this date. Yeah, my understanding is that public hearings need to go first, Andy, so putting me second is just fine. Okay, so uh, Connor, that's your, your detached garage item? Correct. Yeah, okay. If you're a part of an applicant team and you'd like to do a sound check, please raise your hand. So we have a few more joining the meeting. I uh, wanted to let everyone know if you're part of an applicant team and you'd like to do a sound check, you can raise your hand right now. Mr. Yi, you'll receive a prompt. If you answer the prompt, we can go ahead and make sure your sound is working. Uh, can you hear me now? We can. All right, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Yee, 
If you can go ahead and um, control your muting settings from here, that would be easier than the back and forth. Thanks. All right, recording secretary, I'd like to commence the meeting. Uh, now it's 1030. Um, everyone who's on this uh, broadcast, this, this uh, Zoom meeting, uh, welcome. Uh, this is Andy Gustafson. I am zoning administrator and I will preside over this meeting today. Um, thank you very much for joining us. We, um, we are hosting this Zoom meeting because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic has really required us to change our normal in-person public meetings uh, to this format to help to reduce the spread of COVID. Um, this meeting will be conducted in the same manner as our face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Uh, those of you who have attended those in the past will know that we have an agenda that we will um, work through in the items in the order in which they're presented. What is different with uh, the Zoom meeting is how we go about taking uh, public comments and, and allowing the applicant to, um, to comment. So I'll briefly describe now that process. Uh, we have two ways to join the meeting. One is by Zoom and the other is by phone. Those of you who are watching this on your screen, you will have um, as an attendee a uh, hand icon that when um, you wish to make a comment, uh, you raise your hand, the recording secretary will acknowledge you, and then at that time you need to unmute yourself and you will be able to speak. When you're done speaking, you need to um, mute yourself again, and, uh, and the next person who has their hand raised will be recognized. Those of you who are calling in, listening by telephone, um, we will recognize you when you press star pound, excuse me, uh, star nine, and um, then uh, you will be given that same opportunity to comment. I will uh, run through those instructions briefly um, as we move through the hearing. Um, so with regard to the uh, presentation of the hearing items, there's uh, one item that has been uh, moved off the agenda. Uh, it was um, the last item concerning um, the minor conditional use permit and minor design review for 2965 Dutton Avenue. That meeting will be uh, rescheduled as a public hearing. And I think the meeting is the very next date. Uh, recording Secretary, can you confirm that? Yes, that will be a, a public hearing on August 20th. On August 20th, okay. Notices will be sent out for that meeting. Um, It'll be posted in the uh, Press Democrat. The sign will be put on the property uh, in question, as well as mailers. If there's anyone in the audience today attending this meeting who wish to comment on that matter, um, please know that there will be no discussion on this um, topic today, and that you should uh, put on your calendar to join us for the August 20th meeting. Um, also, regarding the agenda, there's been a request that we move item number 3.5. Um, it is, concerns a landmark uh, alteration permit for 615 Jefferson. We'd like to move that forward on the agenda to the second item. Um, so, uh, recording secretary, if you could uh, note that in your agenda log um, and remind me, <laughs> When, when we move through the agenda that the second item will, will be um, concerning 615 Jefferson. All right, so now um, we always allow opportunity for attendees uh, to comment on a matter that is not on the agenda. Um, uh, please, if, you, if it's a topic or concern or an issue related to an item on the agenda, please wait uh, until um, that issue or item comes up. Um, is there anyone in the audience or in attendance today that wishes to comment on a matter not on the agenda? 
If so, please raise your hand, you'll be recognized. All right, seeing none, um, we will now move on to um, the first scheduled item on our agenda. And again, what I like to do is we'll be following the same process as we would with a in-person meeting. The staff planner will give their presentation. The applicant and their team will be allowed opportunity to comment following the staff planner's presentation. And then after that, I will open up the meeting for public comment. And uh, again, I will, we will be recognized in turn. So with that little preamble, um, I'd like to invite, I can't see what the item on the agenda here, um, the first item, which I believe is Connor McKay uh, regarding a detached garage at um, Park Vista Court 21, 2021 Park Vista Court. Mr. Connor, if you can give your presentation, please. Hold on one second, please. Okay, can everybody see that? And can you hear me? Looks good, sounds good. Sweet, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator. So um, <clears throat> this is a new Tugar garage and workshop located at 2021 Park Vista Court. And the um, project description, this, this project application consists of the construction of a 925 square foot detached accessory structure located at 2021 Park Vista Court. A minor conditional use permit is required because the proposed structure is located closer to the street than the primary structure. Additionally, a minor hillside development permit is required because the slope is greater than 10%. Here is the project location off of Summerfield Road in Santa Rosa on the east side of town. This slide shows the site plan. Um, as you can see, the workshop would be located across the driveway from the um, applicant's primary dwelling. This slide shows the um, slopes table and um, slopes uh, below where the proposed new workshop would be. This is the front elevation. Um, so this site plan identifies a 15 foot um, overall height. Um, on the right side of the elevation, the grade is displayed as going down. And I have um, checked with the applicant about this and this is not their intention and we are currently in the process of um, preparing plans that will show an even grade along the entire bottom of the um, structure and that would result in compliance with the um, 16 foot maximum height limit of accessory structures. So the following elevations will reflect this um, gradient that would not be in compliance with this regulation but um, the designer is currently preparing a, an amendment to these plans. It's a little bit more clear what I'm discussing in this right elevation here. Um, so the, the updated plans will show a flat a level below the um, structure. So we have received some um, public correspondence and comments um, opposing this project. Um, many, uh, I believe all of the comments reflected some interest in the aesthetic impacts. Um, there were comments that the garage should be located behind or directly next to the main dwelling or further down the slope than proposed. Um, this is due to perceived elimination of the natural landscape in the project area and detraction from hillside views. I also received a comment that included discussion of biological impacts. Um, according to this person, deer have been sighted in this area and they were concerned about um, 
biological impacts in this regard. Um, the another comment incorporated discussion of um, erosion during rain events causing structures to um, come down the hillside um, when they're being developed on hillsides such as this. And um, I've touched on this one, but the building height was identified as being exceeding the maximum height of 16 feet on the rear elevation. Um, the, the designer is preparing an amendment that reflects an accurate um, elevation and compliance with this regulation. Which leads me into some findings for this conditional use permit. Um, I believe that we can make the necessary findings, staff can make the necessary findings to approve the conditional use permit, to recommend approval for the conditional use permit. Um, the adjacent community care facilities operation would not be affected by this project. Um, the, the proposed structure is located from the Park Vista Court right of way at a distance similar to the residential development in the area. Um, this, this lot is currently developed for residential use and the proposed location of the accessory structure consists of undeveloped land within an unusually large access corridor. Um, this permit would not constitute a nuisance um, due to all activities within the structure complying with applicable zoning code provisions and the extra the structure being located across the driveway from adjacent residential development. Here are some select findings for hillside development permit. Um, similar analysis would apply here. And that leads me to Oh, finally, um, the proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, and it qualifies for a class three exemption under section 15303 and that the project consists of the construction of a small accessory structure. Um, with that, the Planning and Economic Development Departments recommends that the zone, zoning administrator approve this resolution um, for minor conditional use permit and approve the resolution for minor hillside development permit for this project located at 21, 20, 21 Park Vista Court. And I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. McKay. Um, I just wanna clarify the uh, height issue. So the drawing, the elevation you uh, presented earlier that showed the drop off, sharp drop off is, is not accurate to the existing site condition is that is that true so the as far as existing site condition i i'm not entirely sure about that but the intention of the applicant is for the final um constructed structure to be um, less than 16 feet in all dimensions um from the bottom okay. from grade measured from grade to the top of the roof all right. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, and that that will be, um, I would imagine, a, an additional a new condition on the uh, plan or on this permit that the prior to submitting the building permit, the um, the project planner will validate the revised plan elevations show conformance with that height limitation that is correct okay okay um thank you and now um now it's time for the project applicant or their project team to uh, comment and recording secretary if we can recognize members of the team if they choose to uh comment um if, if you do please raise your hand and we'll recognize you I see one. Mike, you should have received a prompt. If you answer the prompt, you'll be able to speak. Go ahead, it looks like you're unmuted.
seems like you might be having some trouble with your sound because we are not able to hear you. Is there another member of uh, the applicants team that might uh, be available for comment or is I don't believe there is. Okay. But, um, if if somebody could, if that is the case, if you could raise your hand now, that would be great. Mike, there's also a call-in option, which sometimes works if you're having trouble with the sound on your computer. You can use the um, dial-in option. Also, I may suggest, um, Mike, if you use the chat feature, you might um, indicate whether you have reviewed the recommended resolution approving the project and that you agree with those conditions in addition to the condition for a revised building plan complying with the building height. You could indicate agreement with that in the chat at minimum. Or not. I'm looking to find that call-in option. What I'd like to do is uh, move forward with public comment portion of this um, item and uh, allow Mike opportunity to comment um, after we've heard uh, responses from, from neighbors. Um, Mr. ZA, I did speak with the applicant of this project prior to the meeting and they did um, demonstrate that they did, they they want to um, change the building plan, so they would comply with the added uh, condition. But it would be great to hear from Mike himself. Right, I do I do see that Mike has responded via text um, or chat, and uh, um, and is requesting the phone number from the recording secretary. Um, can that be provided now in response to his chat? I'm sorry, Andy, can you repeat that? I had a distraction. Yeah, can you um, send via chat the uh, call in number for Mike? Or the call in number for this meeting. Mike is chatting, requesting it. Okay. And in the meantime, um, I would like to um, start recognizing um, members, attendees from the public who wish to comment on this item. Those of you who are, would you all please raise your hand now so we can get a sense how many wish to comment on this matter. I 
I see that one um, attendee who is calling in has requested opportunity to comment. If you give us one minute, I will, um, we will recognize you, but I want to give Mike an opportunity to, um, to comment. It looks like Mike's connection may have been resolved. Um, Recording secretary, can you confirm? And if so, um, allow Mike to comment. It does not appear to be muted, uh, but for some reason we haven't been able to hear. I just provided him with the call in number, so it might be best to proceed with public comment and then allow Mike to um, go through the call in process. Agreed. So let's recognize the, the caller nine six zero zero um and and uh provide them the opportunity to comment <clears throat> hello can you hear me yes we can good morning everybody mr ZA. uh i'm jeff allen and uh, my wife and i are the owners of the uh, property adjacent uh, to applicants uh, property and his uh, flag parcel where the uh, garage is uh, meant to be built. Um, I had a number of issues that I wanted to get on the record. Uh, the most important of which is I want to know if, uh, if the reviewing body has received our attorney's letter from Martin Hirsch dated July 31st, 2020, raising a number of uh, uh, points and authorities uh, in regard to this uh, project. We, we have a bit of a problem on service. We, we only got notice of this hearing nine days ago, and uh, I immediately contacted Mr. Hirsch. He submitted a letter uh, raising our opposition, but it doesn't look like it made it into the file there. And uh, also some of our neighbors' uh, comments do not appear to have made it into the file. So I'm, if you haven't got Mr. Hirsch's letter, I'm wondering if we might be able to put this over two weeks so that you get a chance to review that. Maybe have someone go out personally and inspect the site and then reconsider all of this in two weeks. Um, I can provide some follow-up to that. So I did receive the letter from uh, Mr. Hirsch and I did incorporate those points into the public correspondence um, slide. And I did maintain a um, complete record of all emails I received regarding this project. And I did incorporate those into the public correspondence slide. So there are no topics that were brought up during the public uh, comments that were received um, that were not expressed in this presentation. Okay, well, for the record, then I better go over some of the problems we have with the project. Um, first of all, the garage is not uh, going to be located directly across from the applicant's house as was stated earlier this morning. It's going to be located directly across from my house. It's got no proximity to his house. In fact, it's if you look at a, his parcel, the main residence and the uh, uh, detached garage are almost diametrically opposed on opposite ends of his flag parcel. Um, there's been no attempt to integrate this new garage with his existing two garages, which are built into his house. And I think the city code requires an attempt to integrate. Um, we've, we've learned that he has two other garages built in. He has uh, platform lifts with, with uh, hot rods and high performance vehicles in his house. He has two other vehicles out in the yard, and now he's going to build another garage to house at least two, possibly four more cars uh, in this new garage, which will be located directly across from my, from my southern side of my house and my garage and part of my front yard. 
Um, I'm Jeffrey Allen. I'm the, uh, with my wife and two teenage daughters, I'm the owner of 2025 Park Vista Court, and we certainly oppose this permit. Um, it's the proposed project is totally inconsistent with the rest of the character of the neighborhood. This is a bucolic, uh, naturally landscaped cul-de-sac of eight homes, four of them Tuscan homes. Uh, there are no other detached uh, buildings or structures of any nature at any of the eight houses. All of the other houses have built-in garages. Uh, the applicant has two built-in garages already, and this will be his third garage. And like I said, it has no proximity to the existing garages. It's not integrated into his house, and it's going to be extremely visually prominent out on the edge of his flag parcel. It's almost like as if he has chosen the furthest area from his main residence to construct this two-car garage. It's out at the very end near uh, Park Vista Court, and we're going to be looking directly upon it uh, from both stories of our south side of our home. What we had was uh, beautiful views of oak trees in Bennett Valley. Now we're, go now we're told we're going to be having a 15-foot uh, parking garage and a uh, workshop being built there. Uh, the applicant owns a body shop in Petaluma and has heavy equipment. Uh, he has um, mechanical supplies. He works on his hot rods on the weekends. And this is really the last thing we and the rest of the community there want to see in this beautiful residential cul-de-sac. Uh, notwithstanding that, I believe uh, these, this setting is completely contrary to the uh, Santa Rosa City Code, uh, both in that uh, it does not comply with the requirements of the hillside development rules, which I Mr. believe... Uh, Mr. Allen? Excuse me? Um, yes. Um, so I think you've, you've been repeating some of your points, and, and I just want to confirm um, that, that the, uh, the key issues you're raising are the proximity of the garage is, is closer to, to your property than the uh, applicant's property. The, the garage is in addition to the existing garage the applicant already has. Um, there are view impacts to your property um, and that it, the, the, um, the garage doesn't fit the, the character of the neighborhood. Did I summarize that properly? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be the, the dominant structure one sees coming down the cul-de-sac. Really, the only structure on the left-hand left side I, I, or, I, or south side of the cul-de-sac. Mr. Allen, I wanted to confirm the points. Um, I will. Um, I would like to make opportunities for others to comment. What I didn't say at the beginning is we strive for everybody to have opportunity to comment. And while this isn't a relatively informal meeting, we do try to keep comments to three minutes. Um, and uh, if there is a, a matter that you haven't raised uh, that I did not summarize, please do so now. I'll be very brief, just one more. And that is on the um, hillside development, he has chosen not the lowest topography, but actually the highest topography on the ridge running across his flag parcel. And if we back that down towards the southwest corner where the topography is lower, it will be closer to his house. It will be integrated with his other garages. It will not be blocking views, and it will make it more consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. So All right. if we can... If we can back Thank that you. down on topographically, I think we've got a win-win situation, but not out, not out where it's placed right now. It's too prominent. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your comments. Um, Thank for my you. Confirmation, for my confirmation, your house is located immediately north of his driveway off the same cul-de-sac. That's correct. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Um, and is there any other uh, member of the public in attendance who wishes to comment on this matter? Seeing none, um, I would like to close the public comment portion of this matter and uh, see I'm recording sorry. secretary if, if Mike has had an opportunity to uh, to get a connection and can comment. I do see that we've added a caller. So I want to let the caller know that if you would, would like to raise your hand, you can press star nine on your phone and we'll be able to get you unmuted. Thank you. It appears they wish to comment, if you could re recognize. Is, uh, can you hear me, you guys? I'm the applicant, Mike Sternis. Oh, thank you. Yes, so um, thank you for calling in. Um, hopefully you were able to hear the comment of your neighbor. Um, and yeah. Uh, I do ask first uh, to confirm that you have read the resolution recommending approval for your project. Uh, and understand uh, the new condition that we're proposing or gonna, uh, that's being proposed to require that uh, the height of the structure be reduced. Can you turn off the other audio device for getting that? Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to get that thing off of there. Let's get it out of there. All right, I just left the meeting. It won't let me mute it. mute it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, is that better? Yes. Good. All right. Yes, I understand about the height requirement, and I will address that with the architect um, when I have a chance with them. I left them a message, and the uh, I, it's uh, I had a little, little bit um, the downslope that they put on there is is a little bit more than what it shows on my property. So that's a little, uh, I don't know what you would say. Um, it's too much of a downslope on the picture. So on the property, it's not that much. It's aggravated or whatever. So about the building and the comments on Jeff, can I comment on that at all? Hello? Sorry, yes, please do. Okay, so I do own a body shop in Petaluma and I do have classic cars, not hot rods. One is a 65 Sport Fury and one is a 70 Barracuda Cuda Sport Model. Um, one is on a lift, there's only one lift in the two garages. The other car is the Leaf electric car for commuting and a Mustang, a new one, a 16 Mustang. So. There are no hot rods in there as far as uh, all stock classic cars. Um, the garage on the other side that I'm proposing to build, the place that we're putting it is due to setbacks was the best place to put it because of setback reasons. I would have put it further down the slope if I could have, but I could not do that because of setbacks. The area that it's going in is actually the flattest portion of the grade which where I park my pickup truck right now with a car cover on it, so it will not look so bad for the neighborhood with a car cover on it, because uh, it's on an open dirt field right there. There is no vegetation to speak of in that area. So the setbacks and the actual level of that area is a perfect place to put that garage. And the garage would be facing my house at an angle to kind of show that it goes towards that house. And it will be actually looking a little bit like the, the same structure as far as the way it's designed. And then there will be landscaping around the whole thing. There'll be, a, I'm putting, thinking about putting a vineyard in front of it and then some other trees and bushes to kind of, you know, make it less of an impact of a visual. So it actually looks like the rest of the house's landscape. So it just flows through the whole landscape and the whole property. As far as any more cars going in there, I have a classic 
300 Chrysler 300 sitting in a driveway with a car cover on it that I would like to put in there so I wouldn't get it weathered after I restore it. So I also have a problem in there. My existing garage is too small for two older American cars to fit in there side by side. That is why I had to put a lift in there to lift one above the other one so I could actually walk around them and park them in there without hitting each other. Otherwise, the lift would have never gone in there. Working in there every weekend and, and tinkering on this car is a bold faced lie. I start them up and I drive them. They are never really serviced there because I own a body shop and I bring them down here. I'll do an oil change there and I'll wash the car there, but that's all I do there. So that is not started every weekend and worked on. So if you have any questions for me, please uh, let me know now. Thank you. Um, um, none immediately comes to mind, but I will reach out to everyone. Uh, fair season when I close the hearing, and, and uh, then um, uh, we'll we'll get to a decision here. Again, your your audio is feedback, so if you could, um, we can mute you now, Mike. That would be good. Thank you. Um, all right, just Lisa, I want to ask again, is any other member of the public wishing to comment who has not commented already? Please raise your hand. All right, seeing none, we'll close the public um, hearing portion of this meeting and now um, deliberate. So, um, Mr. Uh, McKay, can you put the slope map on the screen for us to all look at. There you go. Um, so can you explain the, um, the, the, the shading there and, and what it represents in terms of slope on the property? Yeah, so the slope here is how the site exists currently. Um, green, well, I guess white would be flat. Um, no color is flat. Green is a slope from 0.01% to 10%. Um, and then yellow and red are also identified in the table there. So um, just looking at the um, proposed location of the workshop, I would say approximately 25% of the pad is uh, 20 to 30 percent slopes, with the remainder being less than 20. Was an alternative site ever discussed with the applicant that would uh, allow that same building footprint to comply with that? I guess we might call that a side yard setback on the undeveloped portion of the lot adjoining the driveway. No, that was not discussed. Um, do we have any information regarding the slope of that area uh, in comparison of the proposed site? Um, are you asking about uh, about like southeast, moving it closer to the southeast property line? Uh, or... I would call it the southwest property line, more okay. deeper into the lot. Um, yeah, so this is the... This is the only slope map that was generated for this project, but if you give me a second, I can look at aerial to see what the terrain might be like, uh, some with some contours, um, but that I have not already. Well, I, I, research. Yeah, I think uh, it's important to note that um, maybe options on the property were not fully considered that could accommodate that same footprint. Uh, on another matter, can you confirm on what side the garage doors are located, um, uh, which would, uh, in which way they're, they're, they're facing? Are they facing directly north, but it appears to be a driveway or a garage apron? Yeah, so this is the front elevation from the north. 
So it doesn't really identify exactly which way it would be pointing, but um, based on this, I would say that the garage is pretty much pointed northwest. Which, which makes sense. It faces the, the driveway, right? Right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I have a concern that this footprint that is shown um, is, appears to be on a portion of the lot that has the steepest slope. And we don't know that there isn't an opportunity for it to locate in that area on what I would call the south side of the property, um, on the opposite side of the driveway from the house. Um, and, and thus avoid the 25 or uh, the slopes exceeding 20%. Um, let me share a different screen that shows an aerial with um, contour lines and see if maybe we can see if um, that helps. Are you able to see the new screen share? Yes. Okay, so I believe the existing footprint would be about here or so. And then the discussion now is what the slope would be over here. Correct. So the contours look pretty spread out right here. It's pretty steep right here though. Um, I'm just trying to compare the distance between the contour lines in this general area and the distance between them in this general area, just to share what, how I'm analyzing this. Um, it, it does seem like there is some more room <clears throat> in between contour lines um, towards this edge of the property. So I, I think your on the fly analysis, which I appreciate is, um, <laughs> is, is good. It, it, it doesn't really take the place of actual surveying of the site. These are relatively general topo lines um, right. um, based on aerial imagery, not, not the same as actually measuring the slope as a surveyor might that was done for the other map. Um, uh, can you confirm on the site plan that the setbacks are properly um, depicted for this particular property in, in its zoning district? Yeah, one sec. So the site has a 10 foot setback, according to my notes, and I, unfortunately, it's a little blurry for me to read on the presentation, but I'm trying to identify what that distance is on the site plan. Well, um, let's, um, let's, we, I think it's fair to say we will only allow this to move forward to a building permit with a uh, site plan accompanying the building permit that demonstrates it fulfills the 
setback requirements, as well as we previously noted that the structure itself meets the height requirement. Um, so I, I'm going to um, assume here that the that your review and, and the applicant's um, presentation and the plan submittal properly accounted for that 10 foot setback from that property line. Um, and, and so I, I have another question. Um, with a driveway of this length, uh, does the fire department require an emergency vehicle turnaround? Does it require a hammerhead in this instance? Um, that I'm not sure. I believe this project was referred to fire. So the resolution should include any fire conditions, but, um, I don't believe there were any. So I, I look at this driveway configuration and it looks very much like a hammerhead that would allow, um, a structure located more than 300 feet from the street to be, um, no, I should say, I think the standard is the, the rear part of the structure um, is no more than 300 feet from the accessible point. And so an emergency vehicle, fire truck and such would have to pull into that building, but then be able to, that site, but then be able to turn around by means of a hammerhead. Um, it, it may or may not serve this function, but it certainly looks like uh, it does. Um, so that's a consideration in terms of the siting of the building and certainly supports this building being detached from the main structure um, and not that way integrated into the site because to do so would by necessity um, take away uh, the, the, a portion of that hammerhead that appears on the west portion of the uh, property immediately south of the uh, single family residential structure. So I think the, the location in my mind of the, um, of the garage, which is an allowable accessory use in a residential zoning district, there's no question about that. Um, it's, it's in my mind now, is it positioned in the way to maximize the avoidance of slope as is required by the um, hillside development permit? And, uh, and, and then in addition, we do have a use permit to allow this structure to locate closer to the street than the main house. And in this location or an alternative location, if it were moved further down the driveway, that use permit would continue to be required and the findings associated with it would be needed in order for us to uh, take action on the matter. So um, I, I feel like, um, there, there's not enough information to know if there's a site further to the south or down slope from the proposed location of the detached structure to know if we're avoiding steep slopes to the maximum extent possible. The, um, the slope analysis that was submitted with this project is tightly, tightly um, uh, drawn around the building and unfortunately, um, it, it didn't include the, the remainder of that area on, on, the, um, on that side of the driveway. I do believe that's a requirement um, that we understand that, that in a hillside development circumstance like this, that this, there isn't any other place where development could occur and minimize the impacts to the slope. So, um, with that, I do request or um, wish to continue this matter to get more information about the slope of the, the area that's not analyzed on the um, opposite side of the driveway, on the same side of the driveway, to understand if that footprint as proposed for the uh, detached accessory garage might fit there and avoid the steeper slopes indicated red on that, on that map now. Um, and I'm, uh, I, I welcome the opportunity for the applicant to ask questions or respond uh, at this point. Uh, so Mike, if you would call in or raise your hand, um, if you wish to, to uh, 
um, to comment or ask, seek clarification on what I'm, I'm requesting or, or doing at this point. I don't see the phone listing anymore. Maybe a chat would be a little more, a little easier. Okay, I will um, see. Oh, uh, I just see he's calling in now. All right, um, recording secretary that I think Mike's number just showed up. If you can recognize his, him now and allow Mike to comment or uh, seek, I would say seek clarification. Can you hear me? Yes. So um, I, I, can you, um, I don't know if you have this on a computer, you're, you're broadcasting this on Zoom, you must be, if you can yeah. mute your computer. I did that, you. yeah. So um, what I expressed here is, is my concern that um, this proposed location and the mapping, hillside slope mapping associated with it, really doesn't give us a complete picture of your, your site circumstance and whether that building, which is a permissible type accessory use, um, is located in a place that most avoids the slope um, oh, Andy. On, on the property. Yeah, Andy, I looked into this. The mo I want that I wanted that structure closer to my garages in my front of my house because that was the easiest way to enter it and leave it and everything else that was uh, you know, best for my interest and everybody else's, but the setbacks and the slope, and this, I didn't care so much about the slope. There is more slope on the downhill portion that you're talking about moving it to. If you drove up there and actually looked at it, you would see that, that there is more slope further down towards the, uh, I guess, the south or west side part of the property there. So the setbacks stopped that from even happening because that's where I wanted it. I didn't want it further up like it's showing, but due to the setback and that actually is more level where I, that's why I parked the truck there because that's the most level part to put the truck on. That's why the truck is parked there. Well, so unfortunately we don't have substantial evidence in the record to support your, your, um, your statement um, with this or any other matter, we really need to rely on the evidence that comes with your application. And right now, there is an open question uh, because it does appear right. based on your, your site plan, there would be room for that building to be positioned further down slope. Well, but let, what we let me don't ask you know, this question though. Let me ask you this question. Um, the problem that they had with the setbacks was I think there has to be a driveway to connect that building for cars going in and out of it with a kind of maybe a setback to my actual driveway. It can't be right up against that driveway. If you push it all the way up to that driveway, then it would probably fit. But um, there's, there is no, I don't think there's a driveway for, for that. Well, uh, let me ask you a question. There appears to be if there's line work there, can you confirm, is that an access easement to an adjoining property to the west? No, that's an access easement for sewer and water, I believe. I see. Um, so they can service, so they can service that as it, if it fails, you know what I mean? Right, right. So there's not a setback off of a, a utility easement. You can build up to the edge of it. Um, so you would have opportunity to slide it further to the west 
um, and provided the uh, setback from the property line is drawn, drawn accurately on your site plan, it does appear that there would be at least the opportunity to locate it um, away from- Further down. Yeah, further down. But what we yeah, don't yeah. know and what we need is the slope information that shows that this site that you're right. proposing is or is not the best um, site in terms of avoiding uh, development on steep slopes. So that's, so, that's uh, what I need. Yeah, so does Connor and my architect, uh, Steve Martin, get together on this one, or is it more to you, Andy? No, work with the project planner. Um, you would be basically right. revising the, that slope analysis to expand it to include the entire area on the opposite side of your driveway. Um, and, um, and then with that, we'll be able to take action on it. We'll have actual evidence to make a, a decision that can be supported. So what, what, if, uh, what if Steve Martin, the architect that did the, uh, the design and the slope analysis actually had a verbal and said, no, it, it doesn't work type of thing. That's not good enough. No, we need, we need, um, we, we need, need that drawing. to be prepared and uh, work with the project planner in terms of um, uh, the method of uh, preparing the slope analysis um, so that, you know, clearly you, you've heard concern from your neighbor um, about right. the, the location of this. So I think you understand that it's important that we really have a complete picture of your site condition and that um, a decision is made based on solid evidence uh, going forward. Okay, so I videotaped that video will show the slight difference and would that be good enough with an It's actually, you can totally see it in a video. No, we, we go back no. to okay. the application requirements right. for a hillside development permit and that's a slope density right. map. Um, okay. Well, I think he shot the whole slope anyway, so he should be able to furnish that for you. That would be great. That would be great. Now, the next question I have is, do we continue this matter to a date certain to the 20th of August? Do you think you can, is that the next available date? I don't have my calendar. This being the 6th, that would be the 20th. Um, um, or, or do you need more time to pull that together? Without talking to Steve, I do not know that answer yet. I will okay. shoot for that. Um, How about that? I'll talk to uh, Connor about it in the next day or so. Okay. Um, so I would like to continue this matter to uh, August 20th to allow the applicant to provide a complete slope map of the project area south of, excuse me, that would be, yeah, south of the driveway. And, um, and, and in doing so, uh, we won't have to re-notice this project and uh, I see that Mr. Allen uh, continues to be on the call and he will know that uh, we will return to this matter uh, in two weeks. No, I also don't know if the setbacks are going to be an issue there too, so I'll find out about that too. If the setbacks don't meet the location up further down, do I need to proceed with anything else besides just setbacks don't constitute a being built there? Uh, your your accessory structure needs to conform with the applicable setbacks for the project planner as you consider right. uh, alternative sites that you are continuing to comply with our development standards. And further, you might also um, take that opportunity to, to clarify your drawings with respect to the building height. Yes, I will have that also. All right, well, that concludes um, this matter has been continued to August 20th, uh, date certain, and we'll uh, resume our discussion then. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Andy. Thank you. I now want to turn to um, the item we move forward on our agenda. It is uh, 615 Jefferson Avenue. It's a landmark alteration permit. Um, and Susie Murray, 
uh, is the project planner. Um, Susie, are you ready to go? Or, uh, I am. That transition. Okay, thank you. So why don't you go ahead and give your presentation, please? Okay. So the project before you today, Mr. Zoning Administrator, is a landmark alteration to do some exterior modifications at 615 Jefferson Street. Kimberly, can you advance the slide? The modifications include re uh, replacing siding in kind um, and on multiple locations or multiple elevations, replacing and adding windows on both the south and north elevation. Here's a photograph of the front of the of the front of the house at the beginning of the COVID shutdown. I got caught doing a drive by to take pictures, so I took a picture of the family. <laughs> so, anyways, it's a it's a beautiful home. Next slide, please. Here's an aerial view of the property close up, um, just to give you an idea of the of the site plan. Kimberly, next slide. And this gives you um, kind of the neighborhood context here. Uh, they're they're um, located in the, oh, I think it's the West End over there. And they, um, yeah, they're surrounded um, by residential development for the most part. Next slide, please, Kimberly. So here we have the general plan and the zoning kind of side by side. The general plan land use designation is low density residential, which is identified by the light yellow color and the property is um, kind of uh, shown in the, the blue outline there. And then the zoning is R16, which is single family residential and consistent with that general plan land use designation. And it's also within the H or historic um, uh, combining district, also referred to as preservation district. Go ahead to the next slide, Kimberly. So here is um, a, a kind of a picture of the, ooh, I think this one is the north elevation. Um, I apologize, there's a tree there and I didn't get a photograph of, a, a good photograph, I don't know why, while I was out doing my site visit of the north elevation. So what you can see is on the lower, um, the lower windows on that side of the home and um, the, the proposed drawing on the uh, the lower left exhibit shows that they're matching kind of the windows, the older windows on that home um, with the new windows, if that makes sense. Um, let's see that. Uh, and then on the upper elevation, what you can't see is they are removing, I believe it's a pop out window and putting in something that's more consistent with the history of the home. Also note that all the siding that will be replaced um, will be replaced in kind with wood siding uh, to match the existing, and all the windows that are going in will be wood with uh, clad with fiberglass. So, Kimberly, next slide, please. This is the south elevation, um, and you can see the upper windows here. And this is the photograph that I did take. And so, really, what's on the lower level is not visible from the street. Uh, the fence is very definitely behind the 15 foot setback um, line and uh, they're replacing those windows up on top with matching windows uh, all double hung and then on the lower elevation I, there's a very cool feature it's um it's an old we think it's an old coal chute that looks it's, uh, kind of centrally located on that lower elevation elevation and they are preserving that and then um, adding windows adding and replacing windows that are already there and having to comply with egress requirements. So again, all wood windows with fiberglass cladding. Next slide, please, Kimberly. So the project has been reviewed in compliance with California Environmental Quality Act, and it qualifies for a categorical exemption because it involves uh, modifications to an existing structure. Next slide, please. Uh, staff's review did not result in any um, unresolved issues. Uh, because of the time, the length of time this project has been in house, the building official did approve concurrent review for the building permit. So um, the, the egress windows have been addressed 
and the plans that you're seeing on this uh, presentation are accurate. This is what the building uh, division is looking at right now, and I think they're ready to approve based on your decision today. Um, so we did receive one comment, written comment, I, and, and um, it was in favor of the project. It was just received earlier this week. <clears throat> Next slide, please, Kimberly. So with that, it's recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve this minor landmark alteration permit to allow exterior modifications to the single family dwelling at 615 Jefferson Street. And that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions for me, I'm available. The applicant is also here. I don't believe they want to make a presentation, but they are certainly available for questions. And I will defer to him. I know he's been watching anxiously for this. Thank you, Susie. Uh, great presentation. And applicant, uh, do you wish to comment at this point? You don't have to, but if you do, please raise your hand. All right, uh, recording secretary, if you would please recognize uh, Mr. Wellman. Um, no, no comment. Thank you. <laughs> I guess. Okay, please lower your hand and thank you. All right. Um, so now it's opportunity for the public, the neighbors who might be watching today to comment. If you wish to, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll close the public meeting. Um, it's always great to see um, uh, residents, property owners, uh, keeping our city's historic residential treasures alive and well through these types of upgrades. And, and windows are very important uh, elements of, of homes. And I think um, Susie's shown us that the uh, replacement windows and the method of um, making sure that the exterior elevations are true and keep the integrity of the historic character of the, the building as well as the area um, really warrants that this landmark alteration permit um, be approved as proposed. And uh, with that, and I'm, I'm looking here for my resolution. Um, moment, please. There it is. Um, one moment. Bear with me while I, I didn't have that loaded in front of me. I just need to download it. Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, having reviewed the application and heard the presentation from the planner, as well as um, uh, the public, um, I find that the, the findings are adequate, properly made to uh, support the approval of this um, uh, landmark alteration application uh, and subject to the conditions of approval. Uh, this approval is appealable um, over the next 10 days um, and that would conclude, I haven't looked at my calendar, I'm not prepared today. Today being the fourth, excuse me, the sixth, uh, it'll be the- 17th, 19th, Andy. 17th, 17th? Yes. is that a Monday? It is a Monday, um, Monday the that, 17th. That would be Monday. Um, I don't anticipate that, but if someone wishes to appeal, uh, please contact Susie, the project planner, or Ms. Murray, the project planner. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to turn to the next matter on our agenda, um, item 3.2, uh, which is a conditional use permit, minor conditional use permit for 1018 Bellevue Avenue. And the project planner is Ms. C. Colley. Ms. C. Colley, if you, can you give your presentation, please? Sure, just give me a second to share my PowerPoint. Okay, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, 
So thank you, Mr. Gustafson. The item before you, as you mentioned, is a minor use permit for a dog run park for the property located at 1018 Bellevue Avenue. This is where the site is located. Uh, this, is, this property is zoned plan development and the general plan land use is medium density residential. The site is currently developed with 200 multifamily residential units and the proposed part will only be used by the tenants of this apartment and it will not be open to the public. This is the location of the proposed dog run park. And they will use an on like a not used landscape area for this dog run park. This is an aerial photo showing where it will be located and the hours of operation or hours that the tenants can use this dog park will be sunrise to sunset. This is an, a Google aerial photo that shows location of the proposed site. It will be next to the property that it is currently in county and I believe they are developing it with the new multifamily residential, but I don't know the zone because it is in the county. This is, this site shows just like what they are proposing. They will propose a fence around it. They will have a bench there. Let me show you the landscape plans. These are the items will be on that area. They will have a four feet high fence around the proposed dog run park, a bench and a, a granite, paint granite and also a base station. Uh, a notice was sent out to neighbors within 600 feet and I did not receive any comments or concerns about the proposed project. And this project has been reviewed in compliance with California Environmental Quality Act, and it qualifies for a class four exemption under section 15304, in that the project consists of minor alteration to an existing parcel to be used for a dog park that will result in a negligible expansion of a use. And with that, staff recommends approval of the proposed dog run. I know the applicant, Mr. William, he is also available. And if you have any questions, you can also ask him. And that was my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Sikale. Um, I don't have any questions of you. I think your presentation was, was clear and explained the project well. Um, if the applicant wishes to comment, please uh, raise your hand now and you'll be recognized. So Mr. Yi um, wishes to be uh, recognized, if we can do so now. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Is, oh, I just, I didn't have any additional comments. I just wanted to make sure I was heard. That's all, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now it's uh, time for any member of the public who wishes to comment on this matter, uh, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. Seeing none, I will uh, I will close the public portion of this meeting. Um, I'm pausing a little bit to give everybody a chance. I see no no one wishes to comment further. Um, so uh, my um, my concern always uh, with with outdoor dog parks or runs um, will be compatibility with adjoining land uses and um, often uh, dogs, canine facilities, dog runs, that kind of thing um, can have an impact on noise in the area. Um, so I just want to clarify with the project planner that this, this facility is for residents only um, and uh, it, it will be limited to daytime use only um, and, and, um, and, and that way avoid uh, impacts to not only the surrounding or the adjoining land use or future development, of which I know it is a vacant lot, um, but also the, 
the people living right next door to it. Um, so if you would please just confirm that it's daytime use only and only for residents. Sure, it will be only used by the tenants of this apartment complex. Others like from public will not be allowed here. And there will have some certain rules that the management will need to let the neighbor, like the tenants know like to comply with those rules that tenants, the management will provide them. So you are right, I mean, right, correct. No other from outside of this residential apartment complex will be allowed and the hours will be sunrise to sunset every day. All right, thank you. Um, so I, I read previously a resolution, um, but um, don't have it in front of me. And, and give me a moment, please. Uh, I'm going to download that. I apologize. Um, Can I say one thing? One moment, please. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, yes, Mr. Yi, or who's speaking, please? This is Mr. Yi, the applicant. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't, are you on the tele? All right. Um, please go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to speak to Monet's point that the, um, there will be signage clarifying that the hours and who is available to use the dog park. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so I, I will um, now approve the um, requested uh, use permit and um, subject to the proposed recommended conditions of approval. Um, this matter is also appealable. Uh, the end of the appeal period is August 19th. Um, and if you wish to do so, please contact the project planner. So this matter is approved and we can now go on to our next item on the agenda. Um, item 3.3, the minor design review for 3076 Marlow Road. Uh, the project planner is also Ms. Sikali. Um, if you can give your presentation, thank you. Sure, I'm going to share the new page. Okay, there we go. So uh, let me bring. So as you mentioned, Mr. Gustafson, this is a minor design review for the property located at 3076 Marlow Road. The proposal is for a fence that's going to be next to the creek and a shorter fence that is going to be a long parking lot, a new trellis, actually two new trellises, new lighting, planting, and there will be some tree removals. Here is where the site is located. The zone for this property is PD, plan development, and the general plan land use is multifamily residential. The red line here shows the proposed fence that is going to be along Coffee Creek. Proposed fence went to Waterways Advisory Committee on July 23rd for review. And one of the comments that all the members of the committee had was to provide a gate to access the creek. And the applicant has provided a fence on the south side of the creek to provide, on the south side of the fence to access the creek. And here on the site plan, I'm trying to show where the fence and the gate will be located. And on the upside here, on the top side, the applicant is trying to show the proposed fence that is gonna be three and a half foot feet, and it will be along the parking lot. It will be behind the landscape area on the site to kind of provide screening for the parking area. This is the fence that is going to be along the creek. It will be a wrought iron fence it will be placed five feet from top of the creek. It will be a see-through fence. 
And as I mentioned, it went to Waterways Advisory Committee for the review. I took these pictures. I'm trying, I will try to explain what they are. On the upper left side is location where the fence will be placed. No trees along the creek will be removed as a result of this fence. The other pictures, the two of the two of those pictures are showing existing trellises that they will need to be removed and replaced with the new trellis and also an area along along the pool where they have a, like a storage and equipment that one will also be replaced with the new materials. The notices were sent out to neighbors and I did not receive any comments or concern regarding the proposed projects and this project is also exempt and qualifies for class one exemption under section 15301 in that the project consists of minor alterations to an existing structure and also it qualifies for class three exemption under section 15303 in that the proposed fence is an accessory structure and it's recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator, by resolution, approve a minor design review permit for the property located at 3076 Marlow Drive. I know the applicant are also available if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sikali. Um, I don't have any questions for you at this time. Uh, does the applicant wish to comment? If so, please raise your hand. You should have a prompt. When you answer the prompt, you'll be able to speak. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, hearing us. Um, uh, really, what, uh, what the project uh, is attempting to do is sort of takes something that has been, uh, it's an, a more mature um, project and it was done at a time um, when they, uh, I, I, I guess somehow they didn't realize how big some of these trees were going to get on the property. And so you have things like liquid ambers in two foot wide planters with, with paving on each side. And so these trees have grown up and heaved the sidewalk. They've uh, changed the slope of patios. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really uh, uh, kind of a mess. And so we're, it's our intent to go back in and replace, remove these trees repair the damage that the uh, root growth has done, and then establish a new planting. Uh, and in the process of that, we'll be doing, uh, replacing some, uh, uh, some of the landscape areas uh, to, to really kind of bring the property uh, uh, up to a, a, a much more sustainable, uh, lower water using, and uh, easily, more easily maintained uh, set of circumstances. Uh, the, the shrub layer has been somewhat maintained, but I mean, the, the, it's time for a refresh for this project, and that's what that's what this design is is uh, attempting to do. Thank you, thank you very much for your comment. Um, is any other member of your team or wish to comment on this project? Otherwise, I will. Um, now turn to the public uh, in attendance who may wish to do so. Any member of the public who wishes to comment on this project, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. I'll now close the public meeting. Um, yeah, I like the word refresh. I, it's really great to see um, a housing project like that, which is really needed and valued in our community, um, to, to get a refresh, uh, an investment by the owners to help to ensure that the project uh, is sustainable, it's livable, it, it, it will um, be a valued uh, place for people to live in the future. Uh, so that's great. And, I definitely understand the uh, problems with liquid ambers. They grow quickly, and they, but they can be quite disruptive. So I think this strategy there is, is really great. But more to the point regarding um, the fencing and such, I think 
Um, the fencing that's proposed is is necessary. It's it's completely logical for. I uh, wasn't mentioned, but I would imagine for trespass, preventing trespass intrusion, and um, but also I think the um, replacement of the trellises and things like that um, really again um, will help to refresh the property and. So I, I encourage and applaud um, this and, and in doing so, I will uh, approve the um, recommended um, minor design review for this and uh, subject to the conditions that were uh, recommended by Ms. C. Colley. So this matter is approved and um, it too is subject to the 10 uh, day appeal period, which concludes on the 17th of August. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, so now we move to item um, it's a minor design review, and it's at 2835 Santa Rosa Avenue. And the planner is Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross, if you can get your presentation on screen, uh, you can tell us about this proposed minor design review. Great, thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator. Uh, can you see the, um, the PowerPoint in full screen mode? Sure. Okay, great. Yes. Um, so as you said, the item before you is located at 2835 Santa Rosa Avenue. It's a minor design review permit, file number DR19-078. It's a Scandinavian Designs facade improvements. It's an existing structure. Uh, I believe it was the Toys R Us and it, uh, Scandinavian Designs would now to, would, is, in, is relocating to this location. Um, so those facade improvements are specific to the new business um, going in. Um, again, it's, it's facade improvements. Um, there's no change in space uh, size. They're not expanding the structure, just the outside, no parking uh, changes or anything like that. Um, the project site is located uh, just, it's, uh, just south of, of um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the shopping center name isn't coming to mind, but it's, it's between Highway 101 um, it's on this side of the um, the uh, uh, south. I believe this is north of here is the South Side Shopping Center, so it's the one right below that. Um, and then you have the Costco Shopping Center kind of up in this area that's not pictured on the screen. The um, the zoning is CG, um, and it's the general plan land use is retail and business service. Uh, it's it's mm, uh, it implement the use is appropriate for the zoning and the general plan land use designation. Um, here's a, a site plan of kind of the shape and um, of here that's lined here of what's existing on the site. So <clears throat> this is the proposed uh, front elevations. Um, I'll let the applicant team kind of go over what's existing, what's proposed now, but a couple of things that were discussed with staff on, on the review is it came in originally uh, as a different design um, <clears throat> that staff wasn't uh, supportive of. And so they made some changes uh, to, to what it is now. They, they keep the tower element. There are some faux windows uh, located throughout the shopping center site that uh, um, were originally taken out of the design, but um, as far as like an element to, to carry over with the new design, this is uh, the applicant has, has kept um, that intent there. I think there's, you know, like festive lighting that's done during the holidays throughout the shopping center with these. Um, some of the removal are, are some of the uh, columns, as you see here's right here, there are some columns. Um, there would be some here that are being removed and a modification to the to the front interior. Um, so currently it's all this trellis kind of impact right here. There, this is a new window. Right now it's just this little doorway. So they're expanding it to bring in more natural light. And there's this uh, architectural feature that will go across the top um, uh, from the side and, and the top of the, uh, the building. Um, here's what the side between the freeway and the 
the existing drive aisle and, and parking lot um, on the uh, west side of the of the building. They're adding this new window here, um, uh, just kind of to bring in some um, natural light and just some some better aesthetic to the building itself. This trellis um, on the side remains, and and that architectural feature uh, carries over here. Um, so with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department re recommends that the Zoning Administrator by resolution approve a minor design review permit for facade, for the facade improvements for the property located at 2835 Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, I'm available for any questions and I also have the applicant team is here and uh, they'll go over um, the design as well in their presentation. Thank you, Mr. Ross. And I don't have any questions for you right now. Um, so applicant team, if you wish to um, augment Mr. Ross's presentation, please feel free to do so now. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna pull up the presentation, right, their, their uh, presentation right now as well. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Hello, I'm Rachel Cusimano. I'm with Ross Shepard Architects. I'm the architect on the project. And I'm going to quickly just, I think it's a good thing to roll through our general design approach and I'll hint on some further on some points that Adam discussed here. Adam, if you can go to, I think the best sheet to look at would be A511 in the project set. Right there. If you want to kind of zoom in, this is probably the best look at the existing to new comparison. Really, when we were approaching the project, there was a previous design um, and we've, we've made some modifications to satisfy some of the comments that were given. Our design approach in general is we're trying to preserve as much of the existing shopping centers, massing heights, forms, and main elements that are critical to keep the shopping center tied together in that aesthetic. But at the same time, bringing in the design brand of Scandinavian of Designs, which is this very minimal, clean, modern design. And so when approaching it, we're really trying to keep main elements like the tower and simplify it a little bit by removing a little, some of the ornamentation, such as cornices and columns, but keeping the full windows. That was an ask from the city. The Recess planner areas at the pedestrian level, we're trying to keep and preserve as many of those openings as possible. And we know that that's, those are there mainly for human scale and to help break up the facade at that pedestrian level. We're opening up at the ground level, more transparency at the facade and Currently, it, it really feels dark under that entry tower element. We really wanted to bring a little more active activation and visuals into the showroom. The canopy element is a big design move. It really, it, it's there to break up and create a little bit more visual interest for that upper facade, the blank facade above the windows and openings and translate towards the west facade where it's currently very blank as, as you can see from the existing. We're trying to bring, instead of just stopping that element on the front face, we're trying to bring it over and translate it to a very visual side of the building that right now feels very blank and shunned with a lot of passer buyers and vehicles that see it. Also, what we're trying to do with this canopy element is hoping to screen in some way and help mitigate maybe some noise from that Redwood Highway so that pedestrians are a little more comfortable coming up and, and moving around along the front of that plaza face. 
I think the gesture creates a pretty elegant end cap to the complex. We're at the very edge and end cap of the shopping center on that south side. And so we wanted to do a big move in order to tie everything together. On the west side, that elevation that faces the highway, we're also proposing a to open up the face of that building. It's very blank currently and, and doesn't really provide any activation. And so we're trying to open it up and give some visuals into the showroom and provide a lot more daylighting into, into a very large space that really doesn't have much fenestration currently, but also trying to maintain those inset planter walls and some of those elements that exist within the whole complex. Canopies do exist throughout the complex, not necessarily to this scale, but a lot of the cornices and, and smaller elements above entries and so forth have that same language. And we really grasp onto the design guidelines where they seem to really push features that break up facades. And as far as the material palette, we really wanted to simplify the colors. They're actually common, grays and whites are common through the complex. But we really wanted to be able to bring the modern minimal approach of the brand to to this store individually as well. And maintaining stucco and metal and aluminum storefront finishes that are also features written in the design guidelines as something very durable, durable of high quality and low maintenance. With that, if unless there's any other questions for me, I can open it back up. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I think your presentation uh, walked us through the design intent and materials form um, really well. So I appreciate that. I don't have any questions for you right now. I would like now to uh, provide opportunity for any member of the public in attendance to comment? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the public meeting portion of this item. Um, all right, so I really, I really like, um, if we could put on the screen again, uh, sheet A511, um, that would be a good talking point. Um, for me, um, this, uh, the challenge we have with design review in a um, shopping center such as this that was basically built with a unified design concept, including colors and materials and architectural elements, that when a project like this comes in um, and, and begins to change or deviate from that original design template, uh, how does it do so uh, and still be compatible or supportive? Um, I know the original design came in and uh, there was concern about it. And this design evolved out of uh, that conversation with, with the city. I think uh, the, this product or this, this proposal does an excellent job um, with honoring the building massing that is expressed throughout this project. So that tower element um, and, and uh, knowing that Scandinavian design as a brand is looking for modern, simple, clean. Uh, I think what's been accomplished here is to express that design attitude or, or 
a sentiment at the same time uh, not completely depart from the, um, the, the, the form of, of the uh, buildings within that uh, commercial complex. I am challenged by the, um, by, the, by the canopy. It's really bold. It is a big design move. Um, but what I am really encouraged by, what I really like is how this project really opened up um, the interior space with windows, not just on the pedestrian side, but also on the side facing west towards the freeway. And that monolithic uh, wall is now broken up. I really like how that canopy um, uh, element wraps the corner and, and then uh, the color is, is, is referenced again on the, on the window wrap. Uh, that, that to me is really, it does a huge, it's a huge improvement to that dead space um, that exists right now. So I applaud that. Um, so, you know, what, what really I come down to now and the question I have is um, the stark contrast of the white of the building and then the black of the, I'll call it, well, what is it? Is it a, um, is it an eave or a, a soffit on the building? Could you comment on that and why the color is so dark? Can it be, can it be, can it be brought down to a gray tone um, uh, and, and not, be as strong or, or is that really the design intent? The, I can speak to that. The, the, design <coughs> intent, the design intent is for it to be this kind of crisp, clean contrast. That's the palette of, of Scandinavian designs and kind of the, the Nordic design tradition. Um, I, I do think, you know, and typically we do specify a lighter, more of a charcoal, just, just because the stark black can can be difficult in some some environments in some context. We can definitely show that a little bit more accurate. Um, and then, as far as the materials go, the canopy will be primarily stucco with metal metal cladding around the edges, and the white exactly. and and gray that you see, even the existing would be painted. It, it's all stucco, which is the primary building material for the complex. It's actually also an, an off white. The renderings show a very, very, very crisp contrast, which is a little bit misled. There's a material palette actually on sheet, Adam on sheet, right there which is a little hard to read, honestly, digitally here. It does look very dark <laughs> and very light, but the the Eve's one material really is more of a cream color. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you for pointing that out. So um, right next to it, the darker gray color, the gray color, is that what the, what, how do you refer to that element? Is it a Eve or? Is, is that the color that's proposed? The, the look, no, that, so that's the, that's the gray and that's the gray that we're trying to match. The existing complex has gray already in the little, the main building portion. And so we're, we're trying to match that throughout. And then the, the, the canopy right now we're showing as, as black, but we have, we have material samples that we, we swap out for more of a, a charcoal, so a lighter. Okay, so, and I apologize if I'm confused. Can I, can we go back to the elevation and can I, can you explain so I better understand the interior, the relationship of the interior space and the, and the elevation. If I'm looking at the upper right uh, rendering of that north elevation. The, the left side is part of the project is, is being uh, painted that gray color that you, you just showed the sample of. And then 
uh, the remaining, I'll call it two thirds of that elevation is in this more modern treatment that um, is white and black. Correct. And then coming around the corner, that gray is repeated again against the, um, against the uh, freeway or facing the freeway. Correct, matching the existing. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't appreciate that. And now thank you for that clarification. So I like that, you, you, the, the, you know, the, the materials honor what the remainder of the shopping complex has, um, which, which it, and then the color transition from the west side of your, your, your space to the tower kind of provides that transition. And then, and then in the corner, I think you referred to it, it forms an end cap, uh, is this modern design, which is very much um, kind of a brand driven aesthetic that you're presenting here. Um, and then around the corner, you, you go back and transitions back towards uh, a color that's, uh, I'll say less bold, but um, certainly continues the design theme. So I, that, that, that's strong. So now, now I just kind of get back to how stark, I mean, I think the architectural element that you're adding to this is a big design move. And my comment is that's, that's fine. It's always a challenge, I think. And I, in thinking about this project, when we have these commercial centers built <coughs> with a highly unified design theme, the challenge is once those projects or sites age, the design theme uh, sometimes suffer. And, and how do we encourage or uh, promote the longevity of the project as new tenants come in and not completely saddle them with an old aesthetic? So I believe your project shows how you can bring in a new, more modern, new, more contemporary design and, and kind of allow this center to evolve um, towards the future and not get be, not be stuck in a design path. So I applaud that. And I think uh, I'm not going to second guess the colors, though I would suggest uh, if it's within the design the palette or range of Scandinavian design to consider uh, something less that appears to be a jet black architectural element. I think it could be equally strong by stepping that down a little bit. Uh, black like that is probably really difficult to keep clean. <laughs> um, I can imagine that over time it'll, um, unless maintained constantly, will will appear uh, as soiled. So I'm, I'm, um, I, I applaud this approach. I, I really like the moves that have been made to make this fit. It's not completely um, yielding to or, or, or uh, it's, it's, it's challenging but compatible with the design of the community, of the community shopping center. Um, so I, um, I am going to approve this project as proposed with a, with a suggestion, not a requirement, that you look at uh, a grade, a, a, a color for the architectural element that I'm referring to as a, the uh, soffit or, or eave of the building that might not be as dark. Maybe it steps off of black in the same way as the, um, the, the main white building steps off of a pure white. Sounds good. Thank you. So thank you so much. Um, it's always, again, the theme of, it's great to see uh, companies, residents, uh, investing in property in Santa Rosa to continue the viability of, of our land uses here. So thank you very much. So that uh, I think is the last item on our agenda because the last item 3.7, I believe, I need to pull my agenda up. Um, 
was a hearing was requested and it's been continued. Uh, recording secretary, can you remind me, was that continued to a date certain um, or not? The, uh, the item that was continued, uh, there was a suggestion to potentially continue it for 30 days. However, um, there was also the um, comment that it could be continued until the 20th. Um, well, can you go to the end of the agenda? Or are you talking the last, about the one, the one that yes. was uh, this so, one that was elevated? Yes. So this this, this one was um, a public was, hearing was requested, and the matter has not been set for a hearing date. Correct. Actually, we did we did already put the hearing date in motion for August twentieth on this item. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to restate that. Okay. Good. Okay, so this thing, this will come back on the 20th. We made that announcement at the start. Um, we did continue one item um, on Park Vista, I believe it was. It was also continued to the 20th. Um, uh, yeah, Park Vista Court. Um, so with that, uh, we've completed our agenda for July 6th. And uh, I will adjourn this zoning administrator meeting at what time? 1221. Thank you all for your participation today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.